All right, how's it going, guys? We are back for another master guide here for the Royal Open. And looking at hole number one here, um, I did see the win for the par threes. Um, I don't know the rest of the holes, but I do know the par threes. And I saw that uh, <clears throat> this one's going to be into the face. So with that in mind, I'm, you know, half tempted to just basically kind of stay away from rock and quarterback, or at least quarterback. Um, if you have rock eight, uh, you know, might not be terrible. Um, aside from that, I would just look at Thor's and Apocalypse. Of course, if you have an Apoc six, seven, um, that's going to be your choice um, when comparing the two. But it's at that five level that it gets a little iffy. Um, I'm assuming we can probably come up with a backspin shot that, you know, fits four bars of backspin, four or five, um, pretty easily. So it would not, you know, be tragic to need to use Apocalypse 5, for example, over Thor's Hammer. But what I like about Thor's Hammer is just having that extra backspin option. Um, you can see I have a Kingmaker ball on. We're going to just jump in here, just take a look at what it looks like. I really don't know how the distance is set up, but I've seen the winds. I haven't seen anybody take any shots in any hole. Um, and, you know, at the same time, you know, I don't feel like wasting, you know, half an hour of my time before putting this guide out to kind of figure it out either because I think, you know, for the most part, we can figure things out here. Um, you can see where Max is. It's up there. And, you know, this is kind of, you know, plays into kind of what I was mentioning about Apoc 5. Um, we're actually going to set up more for a, uh, you know, four backspin shot. Now, what I do like to do is I like to curl it over to the uh, left a bit more just to be, um, you know, kind of stay away from the rough. Um, keep in mind what I'm doing in terms of rings. I probably went about 11 rings there. I uh, might just gently, you know, I feel like I kind of maybe under curled that. So I am going to just add just a touch extra. And let's see what this looks like. Ah, it just came up short. Um, it is going to stay on this front fringe. You know, more or less, I would say, you know, that shot is going to probably be what we we're going at since the wind is uh, angled significantly um, trying to go at it left and bring it back with some curl is kind of going to be you know kind of a pain so what I can recommend is well you can almost use reference points for where I just aimed I almost aimed up at the rough um, maybe just a tiny bit short you can use that reference point as your aim um, to kind of give you a, a nice idea, ballpark. I was within probably, you know, one yard of pulling that off and actually getting that, I'm assuming, at least 95% of the weights of the hole. It might have came up just short. I'm not sure how it's going to run out. But, uh, you know, tomorrow we'll make the necessary uh, corrections. Um, you know, if you do go about reference aiming, you know, just be, be, be cautious because we could have a nine win you know nine point something or we could have a 13 so it could be in any of that range or 12 and a half at least so keep it in mind that range um, when you're setting up for your shot will in my opinion um, you know definitely be something smart uh, to help you get that one but at the very least you know as long as we keep it on the fairway, not on the front of this green. As you can see, my ball did stop on the fringe. Um, all things considered, you know, it's not going to be terrible, especially with something as accurate as, you know, my end bringer there, 100 accuracy. Uh, we're just going to roll that in. Um, you know, I'll make the necessary corrections tomorrow uh, for you guys to do a revision on this hole. And, uh, you know, I'll keep in mind this wind, and we'll just try to... Uh, you know, add an extra two yards exa example for, you know, and I might need to take off just a tiny bit of that backspin as well, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how that's going to run out yet with four bars. Um, 
I do think, you know, there's there's a chance that it's probably going to be, you know, land zone dependent, but it should probably run out to the hole. So, you know, for the most part, you know, I might just land it just another couple yards longer and uh, go from there tomorrow. Um, I'm assuming, you know, you guys aren't going to have too much problems with that par three, at least, you know, securing your birdie. Ooh, oh, bad break up there. It's still going to roll down to about four. <clears throat> Unlike, unlucky to say the least. So bad break there. One of the things that I can mention, um, when you have a wind like this, usually what I do um, is I try to use the first off the land zone. Um, you can see I really don't need much curl here. Um, I do come off the top spin a bit, so I might go kind of like this. But you can see just w with the way that my ball guide goes, I really don't even need curl. So using that fact to my advantage, um, is going to help me kind of set up here. There's five rings. I'm probably going to go nine rings for my adjustment and not going to use curl. You know, as I can see via the ball guide that it doesn't need it. I do like to get a little bit high up there and try. Ah, this isn't going to be any good. Man, I might end up losing this. So what I usually try to do is get the ball stopped before the uh, fairway. Um, it looks like I might just sneak in and take this, but uh, man, two rough shots there. Um, you know, it is a hard wind. Anytime that you go up to a higher elevation like that and have to shoot down to a, a lower one, um, you know, it can be uh, very challenging to kind of figure out. Um, in terms of how many rings you're going to need to play, that sort of information um, can be very, you know, very, very challenging to figure out. Um, you can see with what I did there that, uh, you know, a little bit off on the way that I wanted to bring that in. You know, I, I, if I could have it over again, I'd probably back off just a little bit more on the top spin since it was coming in with so much force. Um, but you can see it really doesn't need any curl. Like I, I had it low on the fairway with only, you know, no curl, no, almost no side spin, almost needed no side spin. Like that's how the wind angle affects that shot. So we'll tinker around with that a bit. Um, but you know, most, most importantly, concentrate on hole one and, uh, you know, go from there with that shot and, uh, you know, good luck there, and look for my revision tomorrow on it because I'd like to definitely give it a better effort. And, you know, I know, you know I was within a yard or two of that being a really good shot probably, so um, it would have been really nice to see it run out, though. But, uh, you know, that's what we'll do tomorrow, and then you know, hopefully for Wednesday make some kind of, some kind of adjustment somehow. I don't know. We'll try to figure it out. But uh, good luck and catch you guys on hole two.